Have you ever seen those videos of a 3D model doing a turntable animation or possibly a fly through? Well, today that's what we're going to be going over. How's it going, y'all? Welcome to Alt Arc, where we offer an alternative perspective on all things architecture and design. We're going to use two programs, Rhino and Photoshop. Rhino to get the animations, and then Photoshop to compile it into a GIF. If you find anything in this video to be helpful, make sure to like it so that it can get out to more people. All right, let's jump right in. We're going to start with the fly through animation. So the first thing you want to do is open up Rhino. I have open right now a model that me and a couple of my friends made last year for a competition. I'll link their Instagrams down below if you want to check them out. It's Kat and Alex. We want to go ahead and open up our animation panel. So go up to tools, toolbar layout. We're going to go over here under files and you're going to go to default. And then under the toolbars, you'll see animation. Go ahead and check that box and then click OK. So now you can see our animation toolbar popped up. We have three options, animation tools, preview animation, and record animation. Now that we have our animation panel opened up, let's go over to the Layers tab, and we're going to click New Layer. Let's name this one Camera Path. Press Enter. Now I want to change this to red so that I can see easily. Go over here to this little box with the black color in it, click it, and let's select red, and then click OK. Let's make our camera path layer active. So go ahead and click right here next to the light bulb, and you'll see a check mark pop up. So now whatever we draw will be on the camera path layer. On the left hand side in the toolbars is your control point curve. Click it. And so now we're going to draw the path that we want our camera to take. I want the camera to start down here at the bottom left, come up at an angle slightly, and then I want it to fly directly through the building and come out the other side. And when you're done drawing your curve, go ahead and press enter, select your curve, and type in project to C plane. And what this is going to do, it's going to project all the control points in your line to the C plane meaning it's going to make it completely flat. Go ahead and press enter. Now select yes. Perfect. Now go back to perspective view. Now we can see the path that we drew. Go ahead and click it. We're going to click the blue arrow and we're going to raise it five feet, six inches. So it's about eye level. All right, that looks good. Let's go ahead and deselect your curve. So now we're going to go to the animation panel that we opened up earlier. There you'll see animation tools and a little arrow next to it. Click the arrow and a drop down box will pop up. Select setup fly through animation. And now it's asking select path curve for camera and target. Click the curve we just created. And a dialog box will pop up with a couple of options. So here's some vital information you need to know if you're new to animation. So imagine that this curve that you drew was divided up into 10 segments. The camera would go down this line and take a photograph at every one of those segments. The camera would take 10 photographs as it moves through this. And as you probably already know, an animation is just many, many photographs put together and then played quickly. You want to take about 30 photographs per second. Anything less will look jittery and unprofessional. So if I set the number of frames to 30, that means that the camera will take 30 photographs as it moves through this model, that it will be one second long. I want my recording to be about five seconds long. So if we're doing 30 frames per second and I want five seconds of video, that means I want 150 frames. 30 times 5 equals 150. So I'm going to put 150 in here. File type, I'm going to leave as JPEG. You can select others if you want. Perhaps you want a transparent background because you're going to add it in later. You can do PNG. Capture method is when things get a little interesting. If you select render full, that means that your camera will use your default render engine, whatever you have selected, to take these photographs. So keep in mind, if you want only five seconds of video, 
That means that you'll have to take 150 renders, which can take a long time. So you can do a shorter video, or you can change the resolution of your render so it's lower and it won't take as long to render. But I have plenty of time, so I'm going to go ahead and do it at 150. The rest of the options pertain to whatever settings you have for those viewports. A lot of times you've seen these fly-throughs done in Artistic or Arctic. Today, I'm going to do Render Full. Next to your viewport, you can set it to top, front, right, perspective, or whichever viewport you've created. I'm going to leave mine on perspective because I want it to seem like somebody's walking through the building. And let's go ahead and name it Flythrough Animation. Click OK. And now let's save those settings. Because this recording is going to create 150 separate photographs, we want a folder to hold that. Let's drag this panel over here so we can dock it and it won't go away anymore. Now let's click Record Animation. All right, and that's all there is to it. Now press Enter to start rendering those photographs. So now it's time for the turntable animation, probably the easiest one of them all. I'm going to go ahead and turn off all my ground planes by clicking the light bulb beside the layer name. And I'm going to go over to the drop down next to Perspective, and I'm going to set the view to isometric southeast. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. Perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn my ground plane and water back on. Go back over to the drop down next to parallel. And we're going to go to set view, named views, and we're going to save this view. Let's name it Turntable. Press OK. Now you can go ahead and X out of this panel. Let's go over to our Animation panel. Under Animation Tools, there's a drop-down arrow. Click that. Navigate over to Turntable Animation and click it. Now we have a dialog box that popped up. So it's asking us for the number of frames. I explained that in the previous animation, the fly-through animation. So if you missed that, please rewind so you can understand. I'm going to actually change this to 90 because I want it to be only 3 seconds long. I want mine to move counterclockwise. File type I'm going to leave as JPEG. Capture method I'm going to leave as render full. Viewport I'm going to set to turntable. Animation name I'm going to change this to turntable animation. And click OK. Now we're going to do the same thing we did to record for the last animation. Let's go over to record in our animation panel and click it. Let's make sure to change our target folder and click OK. And now press enter whenever you're ready. Now let's talk about how we can take the images that you've saved from your animation and turn them into a GIF. We're going to go up to file, scripts, load files into stack. We're going to click Browse, and let's navigate to our Alt-Arc animation folder or wherever you saved yours. Let's do the fly-through animation, and click on the animation that ends with 000. Scroll down to your last image, hold Shift, and click it. So it selects all your images. And now let's click OK. You want to give it a moment while it loads. After it's done loading, you'll see a list of all your images in the box. Go ahead and click OK. And now what Photoshop is going to do, it's going to turn each one of those images into its own layer. So after Photoshop is done loading all of your images into the Layers panel, let's go up to Window in the title bar, go down and check Timeline. Your timeline should pop up at the bottom, and within that, we're going to click Create Frame Animation. Now over on the right-hand side of your timeline panel, we're going to click the little menu box, and let's click Make Frames from Layers. Over on the bottom left, you can see a play button. If you press the play button, you can see that it actually plays your animation in reverse. This is what we don't want, so let's go ahead and stop it. Click this button here to go to the beginning. And now let's go back over to our menu and select Reverse Frames. 
Now if you press play, it should start from the beginning of your animation. So I stopped it and I went back to the beginning. Go over to the menu one last time and let's click convert to video timeline. So when you convert it to a video timeline, it automatically makes it 30 frames per second. Now if you click play, it should show it at the correct speed. Now let's save our video. Go up to File, Export, Save for Web. I'm going to save mine in my All Arc Animation folder, and I'm going to name it Fly Through. And click Save. You can go ahead and click Done now. All right, and that's all there is to it. If y'all like the video, please like the video and possibly send it to a friend so we can help them out too. But regardless, thank you for watching and I'll catch y'all next time.